Okay, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> I'm Jim Fergal. I'm the facilitator of uh, Career Conversations. That's our new name for the job club. Uh, today's uh, presentation, actually, it'll be a panel discussion on opportunities in healthcare. Those of you who are new, uh, I'm the manager of Job Seeker and Veteran Services. Uh, Javon Morris and Jennifer Wigeman are also on the call. Uh, they're both workshop facilitators. Uh, we are funded by the WIOA Grant, Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. We are funded by Congress uh, and it's a job training program. Our virtual job club, Career Conversations, is open to the public. Uh, we do encourage you to apply, fill out our application. We have job search workshops for uh, clients who are qualified. We have training grants up to $10,000. We do have a layoff to launch workshop every Tuesday at 9.30. Um, we have a questionnaire at worknetdupage.org. Uh, from layoff to launch workshop on Tuesdays at 9.30. Um, we, we talk about how you may qualify for grants to upgrade your skills, uh, continue to receive unemployment, no need to pay it back, only just talk to us. Let us know when you get a job, the type of job, the salary, and whether you receive benefits. Congress wants to know. Uh, that's our metric. And uh, they want to know if these programs work. So uh, the people, uh, the funding that we received today is based on the number of people that have gotten jobs in the past. Okay. Uh, a little Zoom etiquette is, of course, be nice. Uh, please be on mute. Um, we are going to use the chat for co uh, comments, but also... Uh, Jennifer is going to be monitoring the uh, Q&A if you have questions. Um, I, it will be a panel discussion, and we will try uh, asking questions uh, from you, the job seekers, about any specific area uh, throughout the uh, panel discussion. Uh, today we have uh, Marianne uh, Considine. Considine from Northwestern Medicine, Michelle Einfalt uh, from Edwards Elmhurst, Vince and San Miguel from Bright Star Care of DuPage, Central DuPage, Wheaton, and Kristen Samuels Samuelson from Lexington Healthcare. And I will be the moderator. So welcome everybody. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so let's just get down to it. These uh, opportunities in uh, healthcare, uh, we did manufacturing and we're doing uh, IT information technology, as well as um, supply chain, transportation, logistics. And we're doing these every month uh, because a lot of people have this misconception of, well, if it's healthcare, it's only doctors and nurses. And, and I know there's so many other <coughs> positions available uh, three organizations. So first, uh, I, I'd like each of you to talk about yourself uh, and, and then your company, what your company does. And Kristen, you're up at the top, my, my top left, so we'll start with you. It's on mute. Good morning, everybody. My name is Kristen Samuelson, and I am in Human Resources Talent Acquisition for Lexington Health Network. Um, Lexington has been around for 35 years. We are a privately owned and operated company. We're passionate about offering health care and living options. We manage more than 1,500 skilled nursing beds in eight different post-acute. Your voice went out here. We can't hear you. Oh, 
Okay. Wait one, Kristen. Uh, Vince, can you talk? I want to see if you're. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Kristen, we still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I apologize. Um, did I get cut off at a certain point? Uh, you were talking about 1,500 beds. Okay. I apologize. My computer sometimes does cut my volume off. Okay. Um, so in our skilled nursing facilities, we have over 1,500 beds. Um, in our assisted living and dependent living facilities, we have over 500 beds. Um, and then that's where I started my career in the assisting in the assisted living facilities. Um, we employ more than 2,500 full and part-time employees um, between ourselves and then our dining and housekeeping departments. Um, some of our facilities are located in Bloomingdale, Chicago Ridge, Elmhurst, LaGrange, Lake Zurich, Lombard, or Orland Park, Schaumburg, and Algonquin. Okay. Um, let's see, Mary Ann, Mary, uh, you're hidden, but we're going to go with you next. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. I'm sorry my camera isn't working this morning for some reason, um, but my name is Marianne Considine, and I am the manager of talent acquisition for uh, what we call the West region, but for Northwestern Medicine. Um, Northwestern Medicine consists of 11 hospitals. Um, we have in the West region, Central DuPage Hospital, Del Nor Hospital, Mary and Joy Rehabilitation Hospital, Kishwaukee Hospital, and Valley West. Then we have our main central region, which is Northwestern Medicine downtown. And then we have a hospital in Lake Forest and one in uh, uh, Lake Forest and then Huntley and Woodstock. Um, and those, we just recently merged with Centegra and we just also re recently merged with Payless Hospital. Um, we have over 30,000 employees at this point. Um, and we also have a very large regional man, uh, medical group, um, which consists of primary care and most specialties. Okay. Uh, Michelle, you're up next. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everybody. My name is Michelle Eidenfall. Um, Jim, I wanted to thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Most people do not get it on the first try, so thank you. Um, I'm the System Director of Talent Acquisition for Edward Elmhurst Health. Um, we are a healthcare system in the western suburbs, and we own two acute care hospitals, Edward, which is in Naperville, and then Elmhurst Hospital, of course, which is in Elmhurst. We also own a behavioral health hospital called Linden Oaks, and that is in Naperville. And we have about 65 offsite locations. Those offsites would be physician offices, immediate care centers, and walk-in clinics. So our footprint is really the western suburbs from about as far east as Oak Park, but going as far west as Sycamore, with a lot of our offices concentrated in the Elmhurst to Plainfield area. So if you live in the area, you've probably driven by Edward Medical Group. That would be our physician practice group. Um, so I've been with the company for seven years. Um, I have been in human resources for 24 years, love recruitment, and really love working in healthcare. So I'm excited to be here. Well, thank you. Uh, I think I knew your name because I lived in Germany nine years. <laughs> yes, that would help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. So, uh, <laughs> Vince, you're up next. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, can I be heard all right? Yeah. All right. Uh, my name is Vince San Miguel. Um, I am acting HRN recruiter here at uh, our office in Bright Star Care of Central DuPage Wheaton. Uh, we are privately owned, we are a franchise. Uh, Bright Star Care has over 300 offices nationwide um, and each office is independently owned and operated. So we have multiple offices set up in the Chicagoland area with our office locally, uh, our territories locally within the Central DuPage County area. Um, so we specialize uh, mostly in medical and non-medical services at home for patients. So we contract with 
uh, multiple different uh, clients, whether it's the patient themselves, um, Central DuPage Hospital, Lexington, uh, we facilitate staffing needs, uh, as well as home care needs uh, when and where they need it. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> the tendency is uh, to think that uh, jobs in healthcare are only for doctors and nurses. Uh, can you give me an idea of uh, the different positions you have available at this time and maybe some others that you don't have available that you do recruit for that might not be necessarily healthcare, you know, like uh, uh, housekeeping or engineering, something like that, medical technician. Uh, let's start with uh, Marianne. Okay, happy to speak to that. Um, I think what you mentioned earlier is that, you know, oftentimes people do feel that for a, a position in healthcare, you know, you need to be in healthcare in order to find a position. However, um, we have positions from painters to cooks to what we call environmental services, which is housekeeping, to receptionists, to um, people that just guide individuals from one place to the next in the hospital because the hospitals are so large. Um, so we've got patient navigators, we've got individuals that check patients in. Um, and then of course there are, uh, there are skilled positions where you have to be trained like uh, medical assistants, um, patient care techs, um, medical assistants and patient care techs, you do have to have a certification. Um, however, I will say that WorkNet DuPage um, has a program that can help you uh, become certified in those areas and help facilitate uh, finding a position with us or um, Edward Elmhurst also participates in that, that program as well. So um, along with us, so the, the, there really isn't um, a position that there isn't someone that could fit in somewhere within the system um, because of the vast uh, number of, of opportunities that we have and the needs across the across the board, you can only imagine what it takes to actually, you know, run a hospital, keep it clean. Um, another really neat uh, opportunity is a transporter, a person that actually transports our patients from uh, one place to another. Um, I mean, it's it the opportunities are endless. And I don't think we should support uh, forget about the uh, information technology people because they keep everything running. Oh right? my gosh, unbelievable. All righty, uh, great. Uh, let's see, Michelle, you're up next. Okay, um, I have to echo a lot of what Marianne said that there are just so many different positions in a healthcare environment that you don't think of off the top of your head. So of course, doctor and nurse is what you think of when you think of healthcare. But there are a lot of positions where you impact the patient, but you're not working with them directly. So our hospitals have pharmacies. We hire pharm pharmacists, farm techs. Um, we hire a lot of medical assistants and patient care techs that take care of the basic hygiene needs and kind of comfort needs of our patients. Um, we have all of the business offices that any company would have. So we have an accounting department. We have a brand new analytics department where we've been hiring a lot of people marketing, human resources, you know, those are all things that have to happen in healthcare as well. Um, Jim, you mentioned IT. Our IT department is really large and healthcare in IT is a really interesting space because you can get certifications that you can't get otherwise. Um, so it's a way to impact people, but kind of working behind the scenes and, it, you know, it really is helpful to our patients. I know Marianne mentioned painters, and I wanted to share just a really interesting story. A couple of years ago, I was facilitating a new employee orientation, and I had a new hire come up to me during a break, and he just wanted to share his story, that he had had an experience staying in a hospital, and he noticed painters walking through the hallways, and he, he said, I had been a career painter my whole life. It never dawned on me that I could work in healthcare, and oh my gosh, I wish I had known this 10 years ago, I could have created a career. 
So he happened to look on our website, we happen to have a painter opening and he's now employed with us. So it's just interesting when you're in the environment to see some of the different things you don't think about. Um, COVID has created some new positions for us. We have a new role called a guest service associate. So we now have to have people at every entrance to do temperature taking and to direct visitors and direct patients. So that is an entry level role that a lot of people have really enjoyed. You know, they want to be able to impact what's happening during the pandemic. And that has been a way to be able to be involved. Um, we hire engineers. There's just so many things that happen, like Marian said, to keep a healthcare organization running that there's really just about anything that you can think of. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> when I was in the army, I was in charge of a motor pool for hospital. And, you know, I was dealing with uh, facilities engineers uh, who were putting uh, doors back on uh, bathrooms, yeah. uh, painting. Uh, we had medical technicians that were fixing the monitors, the equipment, and things like that. And again, like you had CFO, training, marketing. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I figured we'd do this. <laughs> There's so much uh, more. Uh, it's a business. It know? is a business. And, and what uh, another area that I don't think uh, we think about is purchasing. Everything in the hospital needs to be purchased. And, um, you know, it has to be purchased in a timely manner. And there, there needs to be a lot of it purchased. So there's, you know, an army of people that are supporting, you know, bringing in supplies to actually run the organization. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay, Vince, how about you? Um, well, we operated a little bit as, of a smaller scale than uh, my peers, um, but we uh, they're absolutely correct. And uh, it's a business. Um, we have multiple positions. Um, well, depending on the office, uh, there's training positions, HR positions, recruiting positions, sales positions. Um, the biggest the biggest need really is with direct patient care um, with our standards. We do require a little bit of uh, experience there, but there are opportunities, there are resources we are able to provide to be able, if it's something that you have a heart for, something that um, you're interested in um, at all ages, at all age levels, um, people need help, uh, wouldn't necessarily be medical. Some people just really need companionship care. Um, somebody at uh, reasonably their uh, same age that's able to help them get groceries, somebody that can help uh, pick up medication, uh, drive them to a doctor's appointment. Those are very real needs that around our communities that uh, people who aren't necessarily experienced in direct patient care or aren't necessarily um, skilled in nursing skills um, can actually provide for uh, our neighbors. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, Kristen? All right, you can hear me now, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so, again, everything that was just mentioned, we, we have all of those roles, um, anywhere from doctors, I mean, sorry, nurses, LPN, RN, um, clinical managers, directors of nursing, a lot of different nursing roles. Um, we also have, in addition to what everyone mentioned, an activities department, um, which we are actively recruiting for. We do have an activity director role as well as an activity aid position open. Um, and we do have the aid position open in a couple of our facilities. Um, this is very important. Um, you know, it's for our residents and that's why we all have our jobs is because of all of the patients and residents that come um, in, in and out and stay. Um, there are family members and we wanna make sure that they have a home. Um, echoing the painter, um, that's something that is very important as well as maintenance workers, um, receptionists, um, move-in coordinator for our residents, the sales department, um, everything, everything that you take to run a business. I see, um, you know, you mentioned the IT. We do have a big IT department. Um, right now, we are not recruiting for it. Um, I believe all the positions are full, um, but we do have the website that I'm sure you guys will share the information for where you can look and see our posted positions. But um, right now, um, with Vince, we are looking for that direct care. So CNA, Certified Nursing Assistants, that's what we're um, highly recruiting for. Um, 
And if you see our webpage, you can see all the postings for uh, the positions we have open right now. So, uh, thank you. Uh, very informative. And what I'd uh, like to look at is with all the changes in healthcare, uh, you know, with the pandemic, uh, which probably has led to an increase in Teladoc. Uh, and then we have all the mergers, which, we, you know, some of you have been through. Um, what are some of the hiring trends that you see in the future? And I'm going to start with Michelle. Okay. Um, so I think what we saw is that there's going to be a constant need for healthcare professionals, but the method in which we deliver care is changing. So with COVID, it forced us to look at a lot of different tools that we maybe weren't utilizing as much as we should. I mean, even doing this panel now, a year ago, I certainly wasn't using Zoom or doing anything like this. Um, so it kind of pushed us to see what we were capable of doing. Um, I think that that will will continue to change. You know, people love telehealth. Um, I think you'll always have people that want to go to appointments in person, but for a lot of people, this is a very convenient thing to do. And we're going to have patients that, you know, think I don't want to go wait in a waiting room anymore if I don't have to. If I can call in from the comfort of my home and see my doctor, I'll do that. I'm doing that with a doctor for my, my daughter next week, and I love that I don't have to drive um, far to do that. <laughs> so I think that is a trend that will continue. Um, staffing wise, like I said, COVID has created some positions that we didn't have before. So we've been really, really busy since um, I would say July. During COVID, things did slow down a bit. I think everything was so uncertain. We didn't know what the needs would be. But starting in July, we've just had more activity than ever. And I think that's the opposite of what some industries have seen. And you know, we feel so lucky and grateful to be continuing to work and to do things that are really impactful um, for our communities. Um, so I think that we will continue to see a lot of that. Um, another trend I'm seeing is there's a lot of focus on wellness. So we're seeing um, some changes, not just reactively treating people, but providing a lot of communication about preventative care. How do you stay healthy? How do you um, maintain a healthy lifestyle? And we're doing a lot with our communications and marketing with our patients. Um, we have chat rooms and blog posts. People can ask questions, you know, read about information they're interested in. So I think wellness is another big focus that we'll see going forward. Okay, thank you. Vince, how about you? Well, as far as changes, um, trending moving forward. Uh, obviously, uh, there's the need for skilled care, direct patient care. Um, we were we were foreseeing this even prior to the pandemic for a growing need for nurses moving forward. Um, so that's the one that I'll heavily push because uh, <laughs> um, I know my, my peers can attest to that, that we need nurses um, and we need them soon and we need more in the coming years. Um, so that need for skilled care is obvious, obviously there, um, whether in hospitals, uh, nursing facilities and in homes. Um, the biggest trends that I've been seeing from the pandemic, it has opened up a lot of opportunities for screeners, um, uh, screening, making sure doing temperature checks and um, questionnaires uh, for uh, like for workers, um, other businesses not related to healthcare, right? Uh, so those are the things that we we contract with as well. Um, communication is also the biggest thing. Uh, being able, technology is on the rise. We're, we're doing more with Zoom. I'm holding Zoom interviews. Um, being able to communicate effectively since a lot of our, our work is done. Uh, not physically here. So communication, uh, being able to have that kind of face-to-face uh, -face meeting, uh, not only with your clients, but with your employees virtually, um, being able to see, um, being able to help each other between coworkers, 
Um, that's also another thing that we've been seeing a lot of between my employees is, uh, okay, I need help doing this. What's a good way to be able to do this? And then they'll FaceTime each other and be able to kind of feed off and work off of each other uh, based on familiarity with patients and so forth. So um, uh, those are mostly uh, what I see anyway. <laughs> Well, I think the dovetail, because I just went through this with my father, is uh, the at-home health is the coordination of getting hospital beds, <clears throat> oxygen. Uh, I mean, we don't think about these things, but the this medical supply, um, the technician coming in to make sure machines operating right. as well. So thank you. Uh, Mary Ann, how about, uh, did I call on you yet? No. I, I echo what Michelle and Vince um, have said, uh, you know, since the pandemic, um, we really have, um, you know, see, th see things change. I mean, it, the way we communicate, we utilize teams um, and um, we interview people utilizing teams. You know, that's their first interview now. Um, it, it used to be, you know, a, a phone screen in the past, but I, th I think we just have escalated um, or elevated the way we do things. And I think it's become far more efficient, um, far more effective. And on, on both, for both parties, the candidate's experience as well as um, the employer. Um, I also, you know, going back to what Michelle said, about wellness, um, there is a lot of, you know, information out there to help us stay healthy. Um, I think mental health and physical health is at the core of what we, um, is at the core of what we want to focus on to keep people healthy um, and to keep them out of the hospital. The other, um, the other piece is, uh, and Vince talked about it, the need for nurses and the need for patient care techs. Um, it is, I mean, the, it's critical. Um, there are not enough of them. There's not enough applicant flow for them. Um, and we're all competing for the same people. Um, so, you know, this is why we'll, we'll put the plug in there that if you, if you have a passion for patients, please work with WorkNet and, um, you know, consider that career. And um, there's no doubt that you would find a, a job opportunity at any one of these healthcare organizations in the, in the, the region. Okay. Uh, Kristen, how about you? So we're obviously not a hospital. So some of what we do could be a little bit or seen a little bit differently. Um, but again, echoing the hiring trends, um, we're doing virtual recruiting. Um, I even attended a CNA class online just to say hi, which was awesome because it took five minutes. I was able to introduce myself instead of going to the facility, um, you know, so just to make little impressions when we can, where we can. Um, yeah, so I definitely see in the future a high need for healthcare professionals. I don't see that declining anytime soon, especially, you know, in the situation we're in. Um, especially, I keep bringing back to those activity aids. Um, they're able to do Zooms right with our residents or our patients in their room. Um, that's something that's really been helpful in this technology day and age. Um, and RIT has helped a lot with that too, you know, because some of us um, have been able to work from home or, um, you know, we'll need additional iPads, additional, um, you know, utilities for those tech um, technology things going on right now. I think also as uh, you all mentioned the apps that we use now, you know, each, <clears throat> excuse me, medical system or healthcare system has their app that uh, you can log in, make appointments, do like face-to-face -face teledocs and things like that. Uh, a couple questions. Um, I think I'm saying your name right, Gesin Wang, is that right? Uh, she asked, uh, companionship care, is this volunteer unpaid or are there paid positions? How does that work, Vince? 
So we are actively recruiting for caregiver companionship roles. Um, now, with our office specifically, um, there is some experience required. Um, now, uh, as if if you've taken care of grandparents, if you've done if you've done this locally for free before, you might have the experience and might not know it. Uh, um, so it, we, we do pay for those positions. Um, we do have to meet uh, certain requirements. We are Joint Commission accredited, so we do meet those hospital quality standards. And uh, I, my role really is to help you meet those, those standards, uh, give you those resources to be able to provide that hospital quality care for the clients, even at a companionship level. Um, but those are paid roles. Okay, thank you. And Michelle, uh, could you expand on these uh, newer analytic positions? And sure. maybe all of you have these as well, but go ahead. Sure, and um, just as Vince said, we also do have paid patient sitter slash care companion positions. Um, similar, we are looking for some skills. We do some training in crisis prevention intervention when we hire people into this role, because a lot of times you are watching patients who are, um, you know, might have behavioral health needs and you need to be watching for those. So I think we're doing a lot of the same. As far as our analytics department, um, analytics and just metrics are really changing the way that we are able to make decisions in healthcare. So um, probably about a year and a half ago, we hired a new system director of analytics into our company and he is building an analytics group. It was We took some existing departments that focused on patient information and um, combine these departments to create a new analytics team. So on that team, we, we look for people that either have um, decision support experience, that have IT experience because they're building dashboards to be able to look at trends. So we hire project managers, um, people with process improvement experience. So um, people that come from like a consulting background where they have looked at different ways to um, have better outcomes. And that team is really helping our healthcare providers look at data and be able to make better decisions on how to care for patients. And also, when you have those analytics and that information available, um, a lot of times it's preventative care too. You can see if somebody is on trend to, you know, that might lead to a certain diagnosis and be able to intervene a little bit sooner. So that's a department that is growing for us. It's um, like I said, we did take some existing departments and combine them, but we also added a, a great number of positions because it is such a focus within healthcare. Okay. Uh, anyone else wish to add? Michelle, Kristen, about analytics? I, I'd like to add something. I, I think that analytics is now driving um, certainly driving the business more so, not only from patient care, but from, you know, how we recruit, where we recruit. Um, it, it really is, you know, the, I think, leading trend in allowing us to truly run an effective and efficient health system. Okay. Kristen? I just, yeah. I just wanted to jump in on the companionship care. We don't have a companionship position, but in our assisted living and dependent living facilities, we do have health and wellness positions as well as caregiver positions, and they are paid. Um, you would not just be sitting with one of our residents or patients. You'd be sitting with um, more of them um, similar to a CNA position, but it, it does not require a certification. So that's a position that could be um, sought after for someone that's also interested in that companionship care. Okay. Well, here's an interesting question that has come up. <clears throat> uh, is it mandatory to get the COVID vaccination in regards to your positions available? So I guess that's going to be a philosophy uh, throughout. Is it mandatory or is it voluntary? At this yeah. point, it's, it's voluntary. Uh -huh. um, a, a flu shot is mandatory, right. but, um, but vaccinations are not. It, within... Um, Northwestern Medicine, I think I looked this morning, we've given, we've administered 38,000 um, vaccine, vaccines, the first vaccine, and I want to say 16 or 18,000 of the second vaccine. And we're now 
the, the majority of the employees have been vaccinated and now we are beginning um, to vaccinate our patients 65 and above. Okay. Um, Michelle, how about you? We're in the exact same boat. Um, it is not a mandatory, it's not required to work in healthcare, but it's highly encouraged. So we also have made the vaccine available to employees. I think um, at last I knew about 65% of our employees had gone through to pursue it. And we also are at the point that we're now, um, we opened a community vaccine clinic a couple of weeks ago and are now you know, allowing the vaccine for patients. Um, just as Marianne said, flu shot is required to work in healthcare unless you have some type of exemption from it. But right now COVID vaccine is not required. Okay, Kristen? The Same here. Vaccine. Yeah, it's highly encouraged. It's not mandatory. Um, and we are vaccinating our staff. Um, and the second round is almost done for all of our facilities. So majority of our staff that it's been offered to um, are in the final stages of receiving the vaccine. Okay. Vince? Yeah, um, same thing. Uh, not mandatory. It's completely voluntary. Again, highly encouraged. Um, but because we are... Um, not just stuck in one place. We're going to patients' homes. Uh, we're going to other facilities. Uh, we do do. We do have a tracing system uh, through our uh, th through our website, uh, through our application, where our field members do clock in and clock out. They do a test that there's no exposure. The patient has not had any signs or symptoms. So there is a tracing there um, to not only keep our patients safe but our employees safe as well. Okay. Uh, Karen, would you like to uh, ask your question live about medical bowling, uh, billing? I think I'm going to have to find you. Just bear with me here. I Okay, I think I authorized her and... Okay, I'm unmuted. Yeah, okay, Can you what's hear your me? question? Yes. Good morning, everyone. Um, I wanted to know if um, in medical billing and coding, if that is a, a growing area now, or do you see it as a growing area in the future? And secondly, is this job um, performed usually in a hospital or in a business office? So can you elaborate on that? Whoever wants I'm, to jump in first. So. I'm happy to elaborate on it. it that's a, a huge function. I'm glad you brought it up um, because I, I uh, neglected to do so, but that is a huge area. Um, we do have coders in-house, but we also have um, coders you know, throughout the United States working remote. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. Um, that is a, a big area that is, it, it's been a big area for a while and I think will continue to be. For billing, um, we, we do have more people in-house doing billing. I think now most departments are doing a hybrid of working remote and being in the office, but most of our coders are work, work remotely. Okay, and um, one more question, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, my background is in um, billing and counting, but may accounting, but mainly in manufacturing and logistics and so forth and so on. And I had noticed that um, I had actually wanted to get into healthcare um, in the business area of healthcare for some time now. Um, but I do notice that um, most of the jobs I see, um, the certification um, for the, the coding is um, required. Um, am I right in what I'm seeing? Yes. Okay. Okay. I think, I think something to just um, bring up that is important. When you are at one of our websites, at least um, this is, Northwestern, but I, I think it really does hold true for most organizations is that when you're reading the position description, 
if it says required, then it's absolutely black and white needed, absolutely necessary. And compliance would not let us move forward unless an individual has those either certifications or that specific experience. If it's preferred, then it's preferred and it's not something that you must have. But if it's under the requirement, it is necessary. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Sure. <laughs> That's a great point. And I know too, the way that our postings read is sometimes something can be required, but within three months or within six months. Um, when, it, when it just says required, it means you have to have it at the point that you're starting the position, that you can't be hired without it. But then there are some that allow you some time to get it after you start. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me find someone else here. Uh, Arlene has a question. Oops, I'm sorry. I think Arlene's coming back on, I hope. I hope I didn't delete her. <laughs> well, in the meantime, I'll ask her question for her. Uh, what platforms or tools do you use for analytics? Tableau or Power BI? Um, we use Tableau. Tableau, okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. Marianne, do you know? Okay. The same. Okay, the same. All righty. <clears throat> and uh, there, there's a question in chat as long as well. Um, from the analytics positions, uh, how do you get around the requirement of need healthcare experience? Do you need healthcare experience for some of these analytics? I would say for us, I would still encourage you to apply if you have an analytics background, even if it's in another industry. Um, those transferable skills, a lot of times we are able to work with. I think in healthcare, it, it's definitely preferred that somebody knows a little bit. It just helps with the learning curve of terminology and kind of clinical workflows. But um, because we have a lot of different positions in analytics, I would encourage you to apply because if it's not that specific position you're applying to, we may have something else in that group that would be a fit. Okay. Uh, Joe, I'm going to... Uh allow you to talk or ask a question, I hope. And I don't know why it's people aren't coming in here. Okay, his question was, for driving positions, is there a license requirement? Class A, B, C, D, I guess it's going to depend on the type of vehicle, but, and do you have driver positions? That might be more Vince's line. Uh, I mean, exclusively driver positions. Um, that's not something we currently have. Um, uh, there is some patient care involved with uh, being able to um, get them out of your personal vehicle. I mean, you would be, uh, most of our caregivers use their own personal vehicle unless uh, they're going through uh, one of the um, medical transport um, resources that we, we, are, we also work with, um, like Angels on Wheels and so forth. So uh, with them, more than likely, you would need a uh, specialty license, but with us, um, it's not an exclusively driver position if that answers your question. Okay. I can add to that too. Okay. Um, in, our, in our assisted living, uh, independent living facilities, we do outings with our residents, um, you know, when possible. Obviously now it's a lot different, but we do have drivers. Um, we don't have the position open, but just a valid uh, driver's license is what would be required. We don't require any additional CDL or anything like that. If those positions become available, it would just be a regular driver's license. Okay. Um, <clears throat> with this impl uh, COVID going on, uh, do any of you foresee 
having cameras installed in patient rooms so that relatives can monitor their loved ones from a smart device. It's like a phone or something. Do you see that coming in the future here? Uh, I see it now. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, a lot of our clients do have like those uh, video uh, cameras installed um, to check in on, on their on their parents while the caregiver is there, making sure that they're safe, they're healthy. Um, sometimes it can be an asset. Um, that way, when our caregiver is encountering a problem, um, they can call the family, they can call the son, they can call the daughter and say, hey, this something's happening, um, whether it's with their mom or dad or whether it's with the actual uh, home, like uh, the faucet stopped running or, or something froze. Um, so having that is, uh, can be beneficial. Um, so yeah, it's, it's already happening. Okay. Anyone else? I mean, I can say that, um, can you hear me? Yes. I can say that, you know, it's not going to be something that we're going to install. Um, but again, like Vince said, if a, if a family member did want to do it, you know, I, it, it would be an opportunity or an option for them to do that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Some good questions. Uh, can you expand upon, uh, this is for Michelle, but this is for any of you, mentioned accounting jobs. Uh, is that outside of coding and billing? And I think it is, but go ahead. Yeah, we have a corporate accounting division um, that would be located in our corporate office, which is in Warrenville. Accounting doesn't have a lot of openings. Um, they are a smaller department. They tend to have people that have been there long term. So occasionally we see something in accounting. But another part of the accounting and finance area is um, decision support. So um, we have a brand new platform that we're working um, called Strata. And we also added several positions in the what we call our finance area recently. Um, to work with that new platform. So those would be outside of billing and more focused on um, corporate and providing reports and budgeting support to our different departments. Okay. Awesome, great questions. Uh, interested in data analytics position, where can I apply my skill set from my non-health experiences? Uh, how do I access these open positions? Uh, I've scoured LinkedIn and there's nothing there on healthcare analytics. I guess that would bring us to where do you post your positions? What uh, methods do you use for recruiting? This, all of you can answer this if you would, please. I'm happy to, to start. So um, I think the, the most important um, place to start when you're looking for a position is to become very comfortable with our, with your, our website and to visit it often, if not every single day. Um, we post new positions weekly, um, not necessarily daily, but um, it's. I think it's just important to study it every single day. And um, our positions are also, you know, scraped. They're on Indeed, they're on LinkedIn, but I think the best place to start is the actual um, NM career site. Do you also list with us at WorkNet? Because that's another place people can look, especially our clients. So. We we do certain positions, we do. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. Uh, Kristen? Yeah, I can echo. The first place would definitely be the company webpage. Um, but when we do post on our company webpage, it automatically goes to Indeed, LinkedIn. Um, so they will be there, but all positions will easily be able to be found on our company website instead of having to scroll through, you know, all the other similar positions, maybe not with my company on um, Indeed or LinkedIn. Okay. We, do, we are that... posting with you, so. Okay. Good, all righty. Uh, yeah, echoing um, what they're saying, if you're interested in a particular company, um, visit their website. Um, they're gonna have the most uh, information that you'd be able to gather. Uh, you, you search the About Us section, you search their careers page. Um, and I mean, obviously for us, but really whatever industry, whatever uh, company you are looking into, um, this is just general advice. 
um, you search for this position. Um, a lot of our applicant tracking systems do post to multiple uh, job boards like Indeed, Monster, ZipRecruiter. Um, MyCNAjobs.com is actually a good one too, um, uh, along with WorkNet DuPage. Uh, and it really, uh, you would want to zero in on the specific position, specific skill sets, um, and see if they best match what you're looking for. Um, but the company website is the um, usually the best option in order to make sure that your resume, your application is seen almost instantly. Okay, and Michelle? Um, same here, we post all of our positions on our website. I'm seeing a lot in the chat room, there's a lot of interest in analytics is what I'm yeah. hearing and feeling. Um, and our analytics positions fall under business departments. So if you go to our website and you look up, you have some different categories you can choose from. If you look under business departments, the analytics positions would be listed there. Um, what's probably confusing is maybe the different titles because they don't all say the word analytics in the title. So what I can do is I can make sure to get these on WorkNet due page. We do post there. Um, but I don't, I don't think we have these positions there. So I'll make sure to do that for those of you that are expressing interest. Um, our positions also are scraped onto indeed.com. And then another big source of hires for us is employee referral. So that's not a place that you can go to um, apply directly, but there's so much networking, I think, that happens when you're job searching that if you know anybody, you know, even if it's an acquaintance that works in one of our healthcare um, facilities or one of our offices, getting to somebody who works there and, you know, can maybe help you network to get to the right person, the right hiring manager or the right recruiter is, um, goes a long way too. We get a lot of applications. Um, I tell this story a lot. I was doing orientation and I, I told this story. There was one position um, several years ago that I had 492 applicants for. I clearly can't call 492 people. <laughs> so a lot of times if you do know somebody who can help, you know, get your name in front of the right person, that definitely helps because we have a lot that we're working through. And if we know that, you know, there's somebody who's qualified that's recommended, we're certainly going to look for that person's application. You read my mind, Michelle, because that was going to be my next question is how important are referrals to all of you? So, uh, uh, Kristen, I saw you nodding your head when Michelle mentioned referrals. Is that important yeah. to you? Yeah. yeah, one of my locations, that's all we get. Um, you know, our employees love where they work. Um, actually, I can say a few of our locations, if not all of them. Um, you know, employees love where they work, and so they refer their friends. Um, and depending on the location, we may have a referral bonus. So, you know, just talk to your friends or maybe even anyone on this this uh, panel that knows somebody that may be interested in one of the positions, we would be happy to, to speak to any of them. Okay, Mary Ann. Oops, she's still there. Exact, exact same. Um, re referrals are fantastic. And um, another, another way to find people too is go on, go to LinkedIn, go, go into, uh, Northwestern Medicine or what other, whatever organization you're interested in, and you'll see names of people. And, you know, you may know someone that knows them, um, or you can just reach out to them, find out a way to contact them and express your interest. But if you know someone within the organization, uh, you know, like Michelle said, Kristen said, reach out, allow them to help you. Well, <sighs> And Vince, how about you? Um, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, we do, most of our offices do have referral bonuses. Um, that is the one thing we're always pushing, uh, uh, especially uh, we're, we're a very family oriented um, organization, each respectively with, within our offices. So having that trust factor is very important um, because uh, part of our process is making sure, we, uh, well, part of my process is trusting uh, these people to go into my home and take care of my family members. So uh, that trust factor, especially if it's coming from one of our uh, key people that say, hey, yeah, I can vouch for this person, uh, that will almost immediately have me interested in lining up an interview and uh, getting you through the process. So yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. Uh, I have a lot of questions coming in here. Uh, it seems we may run over, but I'll leave that up to you whether you stay on or not. But uh, let me see. Uh, it's a long question. I guess what we'll do is th this one person, uh, Jim, is a data engineer with seven years, I guess, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Illinois experience, access and healthcare data, like claim data, and he's looking for a position. Would that also be in the business office at your locations? Yes. Okay. All righty. Uh, this question, I don't know. How do you bridge the employment divide so that people from impoverished environments can seek to explore opportunities in healthcare? Uh, I guess I would be go attending training programs that you might have at your organizations, or as mentioned earlier, working with us. What, what do you recommend? And uh, Michelle, I'll start with you. I saw your head nod. Yeah, we actually have a program that we run with WorkNet DuPage to upskill our current employees. So these are employees that might start in an entry level position um, like food service or um, housekeeping and have good attendance records, you know, have shown that they have um, a track record with us for a certain amount of time and they can apply for this internal training program. It's a partnership with WorkNet DuPage and the College of DuPage. So we pay to, through a grant to put them through um, CNA training and then move them into patient care tech roles. So that's a program that we ran at Elmhurst Hospital. We are looking to do that again and replicate that at Edward Hospital. And we're talking, we're in conversation about a couple other upskilling programs. So it really starts with that entry level position in our company, taking those employees, um, and then being able to provide them the skill set that allows them a career path. One thing that um, I wanted to mention is this sounds very basic, but CPR training really opens a lot of doors in healthcare. Um, if you don't have healthcare experience, but you're trained in CPR, you can enter the healthcare field as a transporter. So somebody who is taking patients from their room to a procedure or taking them to be discharged that opens a lot of doors and, you know, it's a good life skill to have anyway. So just something worth mentioning. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I think the CPR um, recommendation that Michelle made is, is really a good one because um, it does open uh, many doors. Um, but we also uh, work with WorkNet DuPage doing the same things that Michelle um, you know, was talking about WorkNet really, I think helps open our eyes to, um, you know, broadening, you know, the opportunities that we can provide to individuals that are associated with WorkNet. So um, my recommendation is stay close to WorkNet and, you know, together um, with the organizations that, you know, partner with them, we can, we can find something that, that is a fit for you. We'll work together to get there. Uh, one of the questions from Nan is, if I apply for a position on your website, will the resume be held and reviewed for future positions? So I guess that's how's, the, how's your applicant tracking system or what methods do you use? Uh, Vince, I'll start with you. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, very often I go back to past applicants, close jobs um, when we have a new position open and uh, uh, just send out kind of a feeler email, uh, see if, you, if you're still looking for a position, if you know anyone that's interested in the position. Um, so yes, uh, if you've applied to us once before, uh, it's definitely, uh, you're, you're in our system. We uh, when the need does arise, we would reach back out to you if you were still looking. Okay. Kristen? Same as Vince. Yeah, we do um, hold resumes in our, um, you know, 
resume portal, but I would still encourage you to still reapply if you do see a position um, that you're interested in, just because once we post a position, it does get posted to Indeed and all those additional sources. So we do get additional resumes. So I would still reapply, but we do hold them if we do um, find the resume valuable. Okay. Marianne, Michelle? Um, I, I would say the same, please reapply. Um, you know, like Michelle said, you know, there are positions that have multiple, um, you know, just hundreds of, uh, of applicants. So, um, and we do work hard to manage them and tag people and, you know, have runners up and that type of thing. But I really think it's important that when you are in a job search, you have to own the job search and you have to stay extremely organized. Um, so no one, if, you, if, if you've applied, you know, check to see what the status of that position is. If you see that it's closed, then you'll know that it has been filled. And, you know, when you see another position like position or other position that you're interested in, it would be important to reapply because we don't, there's, it's just so big um, so many applicants that you really have to manage your way around. Yeah, we do the same. We, we do keep applications. I also would encourage people to reapply. Um, when COVID first started, we actually did an interesting project on my team. We, we ran some reports to find people who had applied to nursing positions with us previously. And we did some outreach to say, you know, would you be interested in opportunities right now? And sometimes it's just a matter of timing. You know, maybe um, you've gained more skills and we're reaching out to you. But it was funny because people did seem surprised, pleasantly surprised that they said, oh my gosh, you do keep our information on file. You know, you are reaching out again. So that was, you know, we got some really nice feedback from that. Um, some people, they just said the timing's not right, but I'm so happy to hear from you. And those are people that we will, you know, keep in our database and continue to reach out to in the future. Okay. Uh... Well, question disappeared there. I got to find it. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, it had to do with credentialing. And I don't know where it disappeared to. Let me just see here. Uh, with a credentialing coordinator background, what other opportunities are appropriate to apply for besides medical office? That's, I guess we're at, okay. They want to see opportunity there. Okay. Well, outside of medical office, um, I'm not quite sure what that means because most credentialing positions are in an office. Um, so you're, you're, I mean, there's plenty of credentials to keep track of. Uh, we mentioned CPR, um, licensures, um, ongoing education. So those, those are the type of credentials, um, but most of those positions will be held in offices. So um, outside of the medical office, I don't think uh, there would be much there. Okay. Uh, here's a good question on Epic. Many large health organizations use Epic uh, for their software record input and reports. Some IT jobs require EPIC experience, but there are no classes available to the public for EPIC. Uh, you have to be enrolled by the healthcare organization. Any suggestions how to get this experience? I think you're absolutely right. You can't just um, sign up for an EPIC certification. You do have to be sponsored by your company to be able to attend EPIC. Um, so it is that conundrum of how do I get the experience <laughs> if I can't sign up for it. Um, my recommendation there would be for us at least to look at the entry level um, application analyst positions or if you are interested in um, instructional design, those are both positions that you can, depending on your background, start out entry level and get the EPIC certification once you're hired. So if you are looking at an application analyst, if you have IT in your background, if you have that experience, or if you're a nurse or you have clinical workflow experience, that is a position that you could be qualified for. Okay, anyone else? I would echo exactly what Michelle said. And I unfortunately have got to, um, have got to leave uh, the meeting and attend another one. But I want to say that this, this was definitely an honor to speak with 
um, all of you and um, certainly happy to help in any way I can. Okay, uh, before you leave, would if would it be okay if you put your uh, um, email in or how or your website uh, for people? And is it advisable for them to put WorkNet on any application they submit, Marianne? And I the answer, thank you for participating. Yes, of course. And the answer would be yes, but put WorkNet. Um, and then also, um, they WorkNet gives us a call and gives us a heads up when you apply. Um, to our organization. So definitely, you know, work with your WorkNet coordinator and um, they'll give us a heads up. Okay. All righty. Thank you very much, Marianne. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, well, here's an interesting one. How do you answer a question, have you worked here before? If it used to be CDH and is now Northwestern with the merger of a lot of hospitals, what's the proper answer? You know what, I'll, I'll answer that real quick before um, you definitely say you worked with us before. Okay. All righty. I guess the same with Edward Elmhurst, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, question, can we use our panel as a network connection? I guess that's up to you all. If you want, put it in the chat room. Uh, or do you want your emails out there? You let me know and I can put what's the best way to contact. If they apply for a position, can they put your name on the application? Kristen, what do you think? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, um, there's a way you can say like, who do you know? And just make okay. sure you put that it was through this, this panel. Okay, Vince? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Having that personal connection um, definitely helps, uh, especially again when you're screening uh, hundreds of applicants for for different roles. Um, being mentioned by name is a little nice uh, when you're reading it. So, okay, uh, and Michelle, how about you? I'm so sorry. Could you repeat the question? I someone uh, can they, me directly. <laughs> if they're applying for the uh, position with your company. Uh, with your organization, can they put uh, that they were on this panel or use your name, anything like that? Yeah, of course. Yep, okay. I think anytime we, we always look for um, on that referral section, if there is a name in there, we do look for that. So that I'd be happy to have people do that. Okay. Gosh, so much of this is admin assistance. Uh, I think a lot of these, with remote, are there still needs for administrative assistance? I guess is the question. Do, do your organizations still have admin assistance? We do, but most of ours are on site. So it's not a remote position. I would say um, most are back in the office. Okay. All righty. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is wrap this up because I appreciate your time. And I just want to end this. Uh, I want to share my screen with people. Uh, da, da, da. So again, I'd like to uh, thank our panel, uh, Mary Ann, Michelle, Vince and Kristen uh, for participating today. Uh, a lot of good info. I'm sorry we can't get to everyone's question, uh, but I think you know, you uh, go to uh, the company's website, you can put down that you attended the panel today, uh, or you can put their names down as well, that they were at the panel. Uh, for people who are with our program, uh, the code for you to uh, contact your counselors is CCHC212. Uh, if you are in the program, uh, either in the career services job search with Siobhan or Jennifer, or in any type of training, you have to maintain monthly contact with your counselor. So you can email this. I will put it in the chat room. Uh, when I can find the chat, okay. And 
I'm going to put it in there now. Okay. Uh, other events that we have coming up for our uh, career conversations is the next one is going to be, uh, this is actually February 26th, Friday the 26th, behind the uh, door, the application process with uh, Georgiana uh, Katsianis. Um, she's a career savant, uh, extensive experience with HR. She'll be talking about the application process. March 12th, uh, Fred Johnson from Path Group will be talking about the achievement-based uh, resume showing your results. Uh, March 26, we have opportunities in information technology. Uh, and then in April 30th, we have opportunities in transportation. You can sign up on worknetdupage.org. Uh, let us know when you get jobs. Uh, we have to, uh, our metrics, and this, like I mentioned earlier, is Congress. We have to report back to Congress. Um, when we meet 70% of the people uh, getting jobs, we get to keep the grant. I've been here 25 years uh, in different positions. Uh, in 25 years, we have always made 70%. We also get incentive monies if we make 80%. And incentive monies are used to provide more people with training. Uh, so, uh, in my 25 years here, we have always made 80%. So this is why I mentioned in the beginning, uh, you are being trained today because of people who came before you. We need this information so that we can, uh, report back to Congress that these programs work and they keep them funded. Um, and, uh, again... I thank the panel. Uh, I know you took time out from your busy day of recruiting, trying to find those positions. I really appreciate it. Uh, some great uh, conversations, a lot of great questions. I'm sorry we didn't have more time. Uh, but we are going to put this uh, recording on our website. Uh, we have a YouTube channel for our uh, uh, job.